Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. William Snedlin coming to you from With One Accord Ministries with another spiritual warfare combat teaching. And today we're going to be talking about something that's not, not well understood in the body of Moshiach. And I think it is something that people need to understand because it can be causing open doorways into their lives. And that is the idea of the object link. Now, what on earth does that mean? Well, this is important tactical information for believers because without understanding this, you may be leaving yourself open to certain kinds of attack because as uh, literally every day we get people calling us or emailing us or whatever because their homes are under attack, their children are under attack, and so on. And this is one thing you can do as a believer to protect yourself and your home and your family is to understand what an object link is. This is a way that the enemy can get past our defenses. And let me explain. In the occult, there is a belief, which, which we're going to explain why it is actually a true belief, because the devil does get things right. Uh, there is a belief that if you've especially something you've had for a long time that's important to you, like, say, a piece of jewelry, a wedding ring, an article of clothing, uh, a piece of your hair or fingernails, something of that nature that's, that's kind of intimately a part of you, that that can be used as a link to you. So in other words, if someone wants to curse you or whatever, and they have acquired um, some of your hair or an article of your clothing or a piece of your jewelry um, that they believe they can use that as a channel to get past your defenses and crush your soul. And let me give you an illustration of this. Back when we were in the occult, uh, somebody stole my wedding ring. Now, obviously, there would be few pieces of jewelry that would be more, you know, intimately connected with somebody than their wedding band because, you know, typically you usually wear those things almost constantly. Uh, anyway, this, this guy stole this ring and then used it to curse me. And believe me, it was rough. And, of course, back then I was not a believer, and I nearly died because there was this channel, this link between me and this guy that was a sorcerer that was trying to curse us. And it was not a good situation. I think really it was only because of, of the Almighty's grace and his love for me and his, his foreknowledge that he knew I was going to get saved and serve him that he kept me from literally being killed. So, and uh, another story that's more christian oriented is we had this one family where um they were they were under heavy grade spiritual bombardment from the enemy we told them okay you know all the stuff we tell people you know bless your home cleanse your home get rid of all possible you know like idolatrous objects stuff like that and um they were still getting bombarded we told them to uh, remit the sin of the shedding of innocent blood over the land still didn't help um, finally, the, the, the Ruach, the set-apart spirit, spoke to us and said, someone has somehow gotten their hands on the uh, pair of the, uh, the wife's undergarments. Now, that sounds kind of weird, you know, and we said, would you mind just going, you know, we're in the, the person's home, would you mind going and just looking in your, you know, dresser and see if they've got a missing, you know, pair of, of undergarments? And so she did, and, and yeah, she did. She had no idea where they were, but but she did have a, a, um, a cleaning lady that would come in, and they had recently come into, um, what do you want to call it, had a falling out because she believed she had caught the woman stealing something. And so she fired her. And of course, obviously the woman had stolen something for sure because these, these, these undergarments were missing. 
And so we asked her to sit down with us and pray and take the sword of the Ruach and sever any object links between um, any article of clothing or anything at all, because we had no idea what else this woman might have gotten, and this woman and her family. And we did, and guess what? The attack stopped. This is the power of the object link. And we're going to explain why this is the case in a few minutes, because I know right now this sounds kind of weird and either a culty or science fictiony, but is it scriptural? Well, let's find out. Uh, you may not understand this kind of thing, but in the spiritual world, it's very, very true. And remember, unfortunately, the devil understands the spiritual realm better than most believers, better than most pastors, better than most ministers. So we need, that's why we have these teachings, is to give you folks tactical updates as to how to proceed. Now here's the thing. The Torah reveals, hear me carefully, the Torah reveals that your soul can touch things. Not just your body, but your soul. Do you ever know that? Listen to this. If you go to Leviticus 5, verse 2, we read this. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be the carcass of an unclean beast or the carcass of an unclean cattle, you know, etc., etc. Okay, that is taught, the word there is nefesh which is the Hebrew word for our lower soul, our, you know, the, the, the vital force within us. And you might say, well, oh, that's just poetic language. But mind you, this is in a book of laws. You know, if this was in the Psalms, it might be different because the Psalms is obviously poetry. And there is a little bit of poetry in the Torah, like the Song of Moses and the Song of Miriam and so on. But mostly, especially in Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, you find almost entirely laws. And this is a spiritual teaching that if a soul touches something, not just the body can be unclean, made unclean by doing that, but the soul as well. So if your soul can be, if you will, and let me explain something here. There are, you know, two different words in Hebrew for your body. There's the word goof, which is sort of an unfortunate word in English, but it's, it literally means your body. You know, like when we say the word body, usually in Hebrew it would be goof. The other word which you find also used in the scriptures is basar, which means flesh. And it can be used both in terms of like, maybe you're eating something, but also in terms of you talking about your physical body. In fact, when it says that, that when a man and a wife come together, they are basar echad, they are one flesh. So, if the scripture there in, in the chapter I just read wanted to say if a body touches something, they'd be perfectly able to do that, but it didn't. It said soul. It said if a nefesh touches something unclean. So, if you'll, if you'll pardon me for saying this, I think we can deduce from that that somehow or other when the soul touches something, it can indeed form a, an attachment to it, a link to it, especially if it's something that's, that has a value that they that a person has used a lot or they become emotionally attached to it, like you get a wedding ring or you know something of that nature. So this is very real stuff. Now, what exactly is an affesh? Well, basically you need to understand biblical anthropology and we go into this in greater depth in Blood on the Doorpost. But briefly, let me just say this. The nefesh is your vital part. It's, it's what makes you run. It's your, um, how should you say it? it? It's in charge of all your autonomic nervous functions and all of that. Um, and if, if you looked at yourself physiologically, this is your body, obviously, this, this outer skin. Your nefesh is right inside of your body. And if you think of it, it's kind of like the nefesh is like the hand and your body is the glove. The nefesh fills your entire bodily form. That's why when you see the idea of souls being mentioned, like in the book of Revelation, it talks about the souls being under the altar or the souls being clothed in white robes, you know, the martyrs and so on. 
they people up in heaven, uh, obviously saved individuals have bodies that look a lot like this body, except they're they're not tangible yet because the resurrection has not yet occurred. So you have these ghostly bodies, if you will, that are called the nefesh. And the way I kind of explain it is it's sort of like if you think of like a either an inner tube or a basketball. Uh, we know a basketball or a tire, well nowadays most people don't have inner tubes in their, their automobile tires, but a basketball gets its shape from being filled with air, pumped up so that it becomes this large spherical object. And within the bat, you have the leather outside, the orange part of the basketball, and within that you have like a, a circular rubber thing that, that holds the thing in place uh, from the inside. And then inside of that you have air. And in the same way, the, 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 um, your physical body is like the orange hide or skin on the basketball. You're in the fesh is like the inner tube inside of the basketball, and then your spirit, your ruach, is like the air, literally, ruach means breath or air or spirit, is what gives you your, your life, gives you your, your breath, literally. So that's how the basketball has its shape, otherwise it'd be just, you know, flat. So in the same way, your, your nefesh is, if you will, right inside of your body. There's literally a very thin layer between your physical form and your nefesh. In, so, in different people, it's thinner or thicker because different people are sensitive. There are some people that are very sensitive emotionally or spiritually. There are other people that are not. Typically, women are more sensitive than men, but again, that's not necessarily always true. There are some women that are as dense as a post, and there are some men that are very sensitive. The bottom line is you can have transmission of spiritual power through your skin by touching something. You see this same kind of language in Leviticus 7.21, Leviticus 22.6, in Numbers 19.13, and in Numbers 19.22. Not only can your soul touch things, but your soul can be made unclean by touching things. There is real spiritual power in the touching of things. If you, for example, if you read in Exodus 29, 37, we see this is talking about the, the altar. And it says, seven days shalt thou make an atonement for the altar. This is, again, part of the tabernacle. And sanctify it. And it shall be an altar most kadosh, most set apart. Whosoever, whatsoever toucheth the altar shall be holy. Now, in the same way, spiritual power can be conveyed through touch. We see this often. The most famous example is in Matthew 9, which the story we've often repeated about the woman touching Yahushua's zit zit, the hem of his garment. And 9, 20, and 21. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. So simply by touching this, by touching Yahushua's garment, she was made whole. So her, her nefesh within her, the skin of her hand touched Yahushua's hem of his garment and, and she was made whole, his zitzi. And another example of this, even the bones of a dead Na'avi, a dead prophet, have spiritual power. In 2 Kings 13.21, we read this. This is about Elisha. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, this was people from the school of the prophets, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast a man in the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Hallelujah! That's some anointing for a prophet of Yahweh to have, that even though he was dead, his bones could still revive somebody. So, understand that the things or the people that you touch can have a spiritual, soulish, or even physical traces of you upon them. Now, 
The obvious example, and a lot of people from here with this because of all the, the there's all these TV shows now about crime scene investigations, CSI and uh, NCIS, and I, I don't watch the things, but you know they're very very popular, where people in these these criminal investigators can go into a crime scene and they can find DNA, your DNA. I mean, if you're the criminal and you've touched on it, they can find traces of your DNA on things like have you been strangling someone or beat someone to your fist or whatever, they might find tiny microscopic parts of you on that individual. In the same way, there's a, this is a more pleasant kind of thing, there's a molecule in your body, in your skin, that's called phenylethyl phenylethylamine. And it basically is called the love molecule. They call it PEA for short. And when you become close with someone and you touch them, this could be a parent-child thing, this could be a husband and wife thing, this could even be a, a brother-sister or brother-brother or whatever kind of thing. And it isn't necessarily sexual. It's just love. And this is like, this is what we read in a textbook. PEA creates an euphoric feeling of pleasure, reward, and joy as it acts as an endogenous, that means contained within your body naturally, amphetamine. And it causes a huge release of dopamine and norepinephrine. And this impacts libido, energy, and excitement. So when you have bonded with someone, when you touch them, you feel good. You feel comforted. That's why, you know, when you, when you hug someone or when you hold their hand, if, if, you're, if you're close to them, if you're a friend or a relative, uh, it can be powerful if they're mourning or if they're sick or something like that and you hold their hand, it can be very, very powerful and comforting. And of course, if you're praying for them as a believer, that's even more powerful. Uh, so when you get near this person, you release this natural chemical the Almighty put in our bodies and it comforts them. But here's the problem. What, happen if, what happens if things go sour? What happens as, I guess nowadays, almost one out of two marriages ends in divorce? The biochemical link can still be there. I mean, if you've had a falling out with your wife or your husband, or if you've had a fight with your best friend or whatever, that chemical bond can still be there. And it, it's like an object link, or another word for it, which is more modern, is a quantum entanglement, where parts of your spirit and your soul, and your, maybe even your body, are bonded to that individual at the quantum level. Now, what does that mean? And I know there are some believers that don't like the whole idea of quantum mechanics and quantum physics and all that. They think it's like new age foo-foo. And... I don't have time to get into all of that right now. I don't really trust it that much either. But I do know this, on a practical level, can be very powerful to understand. And you see, this is why when you have, even if you've had a breakup, if you had a divorce with someone, you still feel something in there that may not be entirely wholesome. And the other individual might be able to affect you through... I, evil eye or evil speaking or curses. I mean, it's not been unknown for, even among Christians, for people to break up and have real anger and rage towards one another for whatever reason. Um, and this object link, this quantum entanglement can facilitate this transmission of evil, of evil thought, of evil speaking, of even demonic power through this link into the other individual. Um, so, if you are in the middle of a spiritual battle and you don't really understand why you're not getting all the victory, it might be because of these object links. Uh, people often ask us, for example, why, let's say, again, you've broken up with someone, you're divorced from someone, but they admit that this individual can still get to them, can still manipulate them, can still yank their chain. And of course, some of this is emotional, but a lot of it is spiritual and soulish, and it's an object link that you can pray and you can break. Hallelujah. We have advised hundreds of people over the years that 
if you are again in some sort of a situation where you think you may you may have this kind of a problem and you're praying and you've done all the other stuff, you've gone through deliverance, you've cleansed your home, you've remitted the sin of the shedding of innocent blood, and yet you're still not getting the victory. Pray, and, and again, you don't have to know this stuff. You don't, I mean, I would just in a general way pray and say, Father, in Yahushua's name, I ask that you would take the sword of the Ruach and the battle axe of Yahuwah and the glittering spear of Yahuwah and right now sever and destroy and annihilate any object links that may be connected to me for anybody else, known or unknown, remembered or forgotten. And if you know the individual, you know, like let's say it's an ex-husband or ex-wife, name them. But if you don't have to know them because it could even be someone down the street that, you know, is cursing you and they somehow got their hands on something of yours. Uh, just pray and in a general way say break all object links sever them with the sword of the spirit etc like I just prayed and cleanse them with the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach and the power of the cross and the stripes and the blood of my savior Yahushua HaMashiach and Father I pray right now for anybody that might be cursing me or using these former object links to get to me, and I claim them for salvation, repentance if possible. And if not, I pray that you would send them to judgment. And in Yahushua's name, Amen. And we're going to put a prayer for this, a sample prayer up on our website. But this is this is a critical tactical component that you need to bear in mind. And if you if you don't believe this is true, if you think this sounds a little too weird. Realize witches have been doing this for hundreds, if not thousands of years. There are passages in the Bible, which I have quoted, which indicate the power of touch. Where if you're touching something, your nefesh is touching it. And if your nefesh is touching it, your soul, that means it has an inroad into your spiritual anatomy, which is totally real and totally powerful. But it's so easy. I mean, you, you just saw the, I mean, the prayer we're going to put up is going to be a little longer than this. But basically, it's easy. But you need to know to do it. And so many people don't understand this. So you need to pray and break object links with anybody or anything that might be attacking you. And I think in doing so, you will find further victory in Messiah. And, you know, these object links can be with your uh, with your own articles of your life. They can even be with documents that you've signed because your signature is a part of you spiritually. If you've signed a deed or a check or a credit card receipt, that's why when we go home after shopping or whatever, we always pray and break any, any you know, plead the blood of Yahushua Mashiach over any object links that may have been created by contract or checks or credit card receipts or anything like that. And we've, we've got other teachings on this in greater depth. But it's it's very powerful to do that because it, it keeps the enemy away from your door. And in this day and age when the enemy is so powerful and wants to go after set-apart believers, you need to know how to take his foot out of your door and slam the door in his ugly face. Hallelujah. And seal that door with the blood of the Lamb shed on the cross of Calvary in Yahushua's mighty name, Amen. Okay, thank you. I pray this has been a blessing to you. Uh, I pray that you will take this and share this with others. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed to this video. And just go forth in victory and Messiah. Please also pray about supporting our ministry because we're entirely a faith-based ministry. And we thank you very much for your prayers and your support. May you be richly blessed. Shalom, shalom.